Well, I think that when you talk about adaptive abilities, um, it becomes much more, co on one level, it becomes more complicated because then you start to ask about, well, you have to kind of think back in evolutionary history and, and why might some of these experiences, practices have actually originated. Uh, certainly when we talk about religion as a general thing, um, religion tends to be able to create cohesive societies and to create a system of morals for individuals and provide a sense of meaning and purpose in people's lives. So that's one way of looking at it in terms of religion as a general thing. When you talk about specific experiences, um, that's where I think I, I would, I tend to, if, if, if talking about it from an evolutionary perspective, tend to use a little bit of the Stephen Jay Gould concept about how, uh, you know, half a wing doesn't fly. So a wing couldn't have evolved to be a wing initially. It had to evolve as something else that ultimately was able to function as a wing, and then the bird could fly. I, my, my guess is, is that mystical experiences and deep spiritual states probably arose not, I, I, don't, I think it'd be difficult to argue that the brain evolved to have those experiences uh, because it, 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 as it was going along, it couldn't know ahead of time that someday it was going to get to something that was a spiritual state or a mystical experience. Um, so what I've tended to argue, and again, I mean, this is all hy hypothetical, so it's certainly not uh, rock solid, but, but I tend to think that because of the ways in which our brain helps us to perceive the world, strives to understand reality, puts together our sensory informations about the world and so forth, that as we develop more and more complexities within the confines of the human brain and the, the higher cortex and the limbic areas of the brain, that we were able to ultimately in, have some of these experiences. And then, of course, once these experiences were attained by people, they were so powerful and so transformative that people wanted to keep coming back to them and keep trying to have them again, and hence they continued to work towards them and to try to develop methods in order to get back to that. Uh, but that wouldn't necessarily engage evolution per se. But sure, yeah. but um, so that's why again I, I think that that people are probably having these experiences in part as as I don't maybe a byproduct is a little too strong a word, but as the result of how the brain is set up for us to look at the world and experience the world, we ultimately were able to have these kinds of experiences, but then how we got back to them, uh, there are many different ways. Yeah, um, because from a strictly evolutionary point of view, uh, uh, and what is the... Uh, what is the adaptive yeah, advantage? Um, what is the adaptive, you know, survival advantage? Right, well, uh, you know, I, again, I, I think that's why I'm not sure that, I mean, you could argue that people who've had mystical experiences tend to be more compassionate, um, tend to be able to interact better with the world, uh, tend to, to feel better about themselves. It, it does, I mean, people who have had near-death experiences and so, so forth uh, have really transformative cha uh, changes that occur within them in terms of how they don't fear death and they have better interpersonal relationships and so forth. And a lot of that's been fairly well documented. So Again, one could argue that when one has mystical states that there are certain mental and physical health benefits that enable the person to uh, to do better and, and to, to have that adaptive ability. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, as for me, I mean, I've actually tried in some senses to get away from the discussion of evolutionary adaptability uh, with regard to religious, spiritual states and so forth because it becomes very hypothetical and, and you never really know what happened 100,000 years ago that enabled people to start to have these kinds of experiences. Uh, I, I think ultimately we might be far better off really residing on more... Um, more solid ground of what's happening neuroscientifically because we can at least see what's happening there and see how those changes actually occur in the brain.